giving a speech which you will not find in a Toastmasters manual. I'm somewhat happy about that. <laughs> Larry is going to give a speech today which will be 10 to 12 minutes, entitled The Peach Pit. It is a speech that he developed to motivate and change the way the audience views their life's experiences. His speech today is being evaluated for his acceptance into the Toastmasters Speakers Bureau. He plans on helping you look past the fruit and into the pit with his speech, The Peach Pit. Let's welcome Larry Stepanski. What do you see? Most people would agree it's a peach. And for the most part, I would agree. Except I see something more relevant. This peach, a flesh covering, that houses a sometimes soft and sweet, sometimes hard and sour interior, that inside encompasses what most people see as a nuisance, the pit. Most people view the pit as just a necessary evil, a piece of the peach that has no value, and they discard it. My friends, without the pit, we wouldn't have a peach. And if given the time to develop and a nurturing, that pit will give life to not one, but many peaches. So why is a peach so relevant? You and I, a flesh covering that contains a sometimes soft and sweet and sometimes not so much interior. <laughs> <laughs> and every day on our journey, we are going to encounter one or more pits. Most people, just like the peach pit, Disregard their nuisances, their problems, their pits. A necessary evil, they say. Part of life, something we just have to get over. I was one of those people in my previous life. Now I say previous life because, because I view myself as born again. Not from a religious standpoint, but from a life standpoint. Many years ago, I was living life in a fast lane. I would go from problem to problem, dealing with the issues and moving on to the next. I didn't care what it was, why it was there, or who put it there. That wasn't important. What was important was to move it out of the way and continue on my journey. One day a friend, her name was Anna, came over and she's a new age spiritualist. She believes in tarot and astrology and the law of attraction, and karma, and dharma, and, and all the other else. <laughs> I didn't have time for all that nonsense. I was too self-absorbed in my own life. And I just would listen to her stories. And on this day, she told me, she said, Larry, you're not learning your lessons. You're just dealing with these issues, but you're not learning the importance. You need to slow down and understand what the purpose is. If you don't slow down, something is going to happen that will force you to slow down. I disregarded this conversation. It was just Anna being Anna. And I continued on my fast-paced life. A few months later, January 13, 2003, I was at work, a typical day, running from one problem to the next dealing with them when all of a sudden I slipped on ice. I fell and I woke up in the emergency room. A doctor who identified himself as my new orthopedic surgeon explained my injury. He said, Larry, you fell in just the right way with just the right amount of force to completely annihilate your hip and your femur. We're going to take you to surgery. I'm going to do everything I can, but I can't promise you I'll ever walk normal again. 
not more than a month and a half earlier, I just turned 40 years old. And the thought of not being able to walk normal was a tough pill to swallow. They whisked me off to surgery. The next day I woke up in my recovery room being jostled by a nurse. Larry, you got, you have to get up and walk. I was convinced she was in the wrong room with the wrong Larry and there was no way I was walking. I just got out of surgery less than 24 hours ago. She was convinced she was in the right room with the right Larry and I was going to start walking. Larry, you gotta put pressure on the leg. You need to get that joint moving so it doesn't seize. And that started a long road of rehabilitation. I spent several weeks in the hospital and then I came home and spent many, many months going through surgeries and more rehab. I was filled with pain, but more importantly, self-pity. Why me? What did I ever do wrong? How could this happen to me? One day Anna came by to visit and once again she reminded me of what she told me so many months earlier. And once again, I dismissed it as Anna being Anna. Before she left, she made a statement that just like the scalpel cut me to the bone. Larry, you can see this as a misfortune and be the victim. Or you can see this as a new beginning, a new opportunity, and become the victor. The choice is yours. I thought about what she had said all day, all evening. And when I went to bed, mulling over these thoughts, I dreamed about the possibilities. The next morning I awoke, born again. Something happened while I slept, and it rebooted my thought process. I woke up realizing that this was the beginning of the new me. This had no connection to the old me. This was my new path. This was what I had to deal with, and I was going to make it the best I could, and I was going to enjoy the process the best I could. And all of a sudden, my rehab changed. I no longer was rehabbing because I had to. I was rehabbing because I wanted to. And my body responded in a much different way. It was a difficult journey. Three years of rehab, three surgeries. But today I stand before you with somebody who can walk normal, with a natural hip, not an artificial one. I share this story because success doesn't just happen to us. We don't get successful because we're lucky. We find success through our pits. When you have a problem, when you find a pit, and you nurture it, and you give it time to grow, the possibilities are endless. Today I'd like to accomplish two missions. First, the next time you eat a piece of fruit, and you come to the pit, I'm hoping that you remember my story. And my story will spark a thought of your own story. And secondly, I'm hoping when you find that pit, you'll save it. Maybe put it on a plate. Or if you want to be extreme, do what I did. Make a monument. <laughs> uh, that will do two things. Number one, every day when you see it, it will remind you of what's important in your life. And number two, it will be an attention getter and a conversation starter. When somebody comes over and sees your pit, they're bound to say, What? <laughs> but that gives you the chance to explain the story of the pit. And more importantly, to share your story. Because each and every one of you have gone through something that should be shared. Someone needs to hear your story. And if you have a difficult time sharing your story, join Toastmasters International. It's a great organization that will help you with your communication skills and help you to be heard. My friends, every day on our journey of life, you're going to encounter pits. The question is, what are you going to do with them? 
in the words of Anna, are you going to be a victim and view them as a mishap? Or are you going to be a victor and see them as a new beginning, an opportunity? My friends, the choice really is yours.